Greetings, Earth. You're listening to the New Green Podcast on Hubski.com. If you're like me, you're fascinated by space. Ever since you were a kid, uh, growing up watching science fiction movies, looking up at the expansive sky and wondering what was up there and how, if, when, you might be a part of it. In 68, we took our first steps on the moon and the New York Times editorial wrote, the lunar landing of the astronauts is more than a step in history. It's a step in evolution. Well, I tend to agree. Today, we talk about why we love space, when we started to love space, and what we're excited about regarding the future of space exploration. As far as I can remember, I've always been interested in space. That's MK. However, I would have to say that the Star Wars movies played a large part in my childhood with my fascination with space. The notion that, you know, spaceships could cross the galaxy and different peoples lived on different planets. It doesn't get much better than that. I sort of feel like I was always interested in space. Meet Isib. That's E-C-I-B on Hubski. Um, certainly as far back as I can remember, as soon as I could start reading, I was reading books about space. And it, it was sort of always there. It was always something that fascinated me. When I look at my nephews, from a young age they each seem to have their uh, special pet interests and obsessions. You know, one of them loves trains, the other one loves garbage trucks. And for me, I think that that space was my garbage truck. Um, I just always loved it. I first became interested in space when I was probably five or six years old. Meet Steve. Thanks to my brother. Uh, he had a giant space shuttle poster, I think it was Columbia, hanging on the ceiling. And so when you laid in his bunk bed, uh, you know, it's only three feet or so from your face. And it was like a schematics, had schematics and cutaways so you could see the, the plumbing and the electrical work. Uh, I remember laying there for hours just being completely fascinated with this vehicle. Here's Cadell Last of the AdvancedApes.com. And I, I just remember being in the kitchen with my dad and my mom and, and just being a kid and asking those questions like where does it end and how far does it go and, and not being able to wrap my head around those concepts and, and obviously they're concepts that, that any human has trouble wrapping their head around but yeah I remember being interested in, in those types of questions from an early age. This is BB for the New Green Podcast about space. Kind of like asking me when I learned to read or something it's just it was so young of an age that I just don't have a recollection of it. Um, my grandfather started out as a pilot and he had, he had had a undergraduate degree in engineering so he parlayed his Navy career into being a Navy rocket scientist and he worked on the Vanguard program and from there he actually became one of the uh, first 50 people that was hired by NASA or NACA at the time actually. Sure of my grandfather, John Glenn. You know, so all these kind of reminders around of, of the space program, how it kind of shaped our family history. Our interest in space is handed down from family members and from popular culture. But have we humans always had this interest? As long as there have been humans, there has been some gen there's evidence for some general interest in space, and this goes even as far back as the the middle and, and upper Paleolithic where we see cave art of, of people depicting things like uh, the lunar cycle and the solar cycle and, and planetary movements, mm -hmm. things you can see with your naked eye. But then mm -hmm. actually forming an understanding that space is a place that, that humans may be able to go one day, I think the earliest evidence we have for that comes from uh, the first ancient Greek societies. Um, where some of their most forward-thinking philosophers were basically just using logic and reason, reason to uh, propose that stars that you could see in the night sky were just like our sun, only they were further away, and that it was possible for there to be planets around those stars, just as there's a planet around our star, and that 
those planets could have life and that it would be possible for some far distant civilization to reach them. And I, I think that's, that's infinitely them. fascinating. So we've been looking up at the sky for centuries, wondering what's out there. But it's only recently in human history that we've taken concrete steps to find out. I'd have to say that the Voyager probes... Here's MK. Uh, I find those to be really fascinating. I think a lot of people would pick the Apollo missions. But there's something about the Apollo missions that although they're just incredible, you know, and they're a huge achievement for us, they seem to me to be more Earth-centric. A large narrative of the Apollo missions was, you know, in the context of the Cold War and, and defeating the Soviet Union. And so in a lot of ways it was kind of a human competition, although space played a role in it, you know, a huge role. But the Voyager missions to me are more just about space themselves. And, and the fact that they're just sent out there to continuously just go further and further into the expanse, sending back data as they go, but then, you know, eventually just going off on their own lonely message in a bottle mission. I think that's really, you know, one of the coolest explorations that we've had yet. When I think of uh, some of my favorite advancements, if I had to pick one, I'd go with Voyager 1. Like Isib, everyone I spoke to mentioned Voyager 1, and for good reason. It's an amazing human accomplishment, and, well, it's still going. It was sent out to study the, the outer uh, bodies in the solar system, and it's leaving the solar system. It's going to be the first object that we created uh, as humans that's going to go into interstellar space, and it's going to happen you know, in our lifetime real soon. Maybe a couple years from now, or, or sooner, maybe a matter of uh, months, Voyager is going to pass completely into interstellar space and be out of the influence of the solar system. And it'll still be sending us data back. So that is incredible to me. I mean, how exciting. 35 years later, it's still going strong. I'm completely mystified by space. I mean, just, just the word itself, space. That's Steve. Right? It's just this area. It's this, it's this ether of what is out there. Who is out there, if anyone? Are we alone out there? Right? I think that is probably why it's such a preoccupation, because there are so many unanswered questions. Like Voyager 1, everyone I spoke to mentioned Mars. Here's MK. Um... For a couple of years, I was a member of the Michigan Mars Society, and I went to a couple meetings. I think I'm going to rejoin it. I'm a defunct member now. I joined after reading Robert Zubrin's Case for Mars. Zubrin argues that frontiers are critical for a healthy society, and that Mars is the next frontier, or the next logical frontier, for us as a species, and that in you know, trying to colonize Mars and face that, we will evolve as a, as a people. And, you know, a lot of, some of the best things that we've done as a species and some of the best cultural and technological advancements have paralleled the exploration of new frontiers. And I do, I do genuinely believe that space does present opportunities in, in that respect. Is there life on Mars? I think that we're seeing a paradigm shift in space exploration where we're going to see private industry really step up and, uh, and deliver solutions in that regard. But, you know, the, the different models of funding space exploration, governments versus private industry, they, they don't have to be mutually exclusive. I, I would hate to think that governments just stop funding important research and initiatives and let the private industry guide everything because the incentives and the reason that that private industry does what it does are different than the reasons you know society might undertake an endeavor uh, under the uh, auspices of their government. Every person I spoke to mentioned Elon Musk and SpaceX and most of the people I talked to also mentioned that they think we should have an increase in the amount of tax dollars going towards space research and funding. There's this whole notion that, and I've run into a lot of people who have this in their head, there's this whole notion that if we put money into space, then the money just goes to space. Like it somehow evaporates into space. 
But that's not the case at all. Like if, if we put our tax dollars or you know, increasingly private industry is getting involved in space, but if we put our money into space, it's going to, to fuel thousands of jobs here on Earth. Like there, there are people here on Earth that are getting that money and it's staying here. It, it, the, what we don't know dwarfs our knowledge, and it's right there looking at us. And I think it just you know, begs the question, are we up for it? You know, That's MK. Do we have it in us? Are we that kind of species? Can we get off this rock? And can we learn more about our place and, and, and our time? And I think that that's going to always not mankind. I don't think that we really have any choice. I think it's, it's hardwired into us. Um, I think on a most basic level, learning about our environment is essential to us as a survival trait. I would hate to be so myopic to think that the way we understand the universe in our little sphere is universally uh, adequate for, for the rest of space. I don't know. And that's probably a big source of the, of the fascination, right, is I don't know. We don't know. And humans are pretty good at chipping away at something that they don't understand or they don't know about until they find some answers. And I think it's, it's primal. It's, it's almost the same kind of feeling that you get, you know, it's almost universal, that feeling when you get and you stand at the edge of an ocean and you look. It's calming and it's mysterious. And I think space is, it's the other notion, you know. It, it's, we're on the shore. And we're still on the shore. So my question to you, Hubski, why are we fascinated with space? I want to thank Steve, Esib, MK, and BB for helping with this podcast. I'd also like to give big thanks to Cadell Last of the Advanced Apes for his help as well. So we're still standing on the shore, but we'll get there. You know, I'm, I'm involved in science myself, but not in any way with uh, space exploration or, or aeronautics in general, although I have a venture planned with some buddies relatively soon that I hope will be successful, if not incredibly silly. But anyway, that's about all I can say while striving about the uh, space program. Uh, signing off. <laughs>